Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. We are here to talk to you about LiDAR-TJS, Google's high-performance web AI runtime. My name is Chintan Parikh. I'm a product manager. And my name is Matthew Solonil. I'm a software engineer. All right, so with that, let's dive in. So as we know, a lot of the open source ML ecosystem generally prefers to use PyTorch. That has come to be the more prominent way of running all of these models on device. But the journey to do this isn't always that straightforward. There's many steps as we know it. Even when other frameworks like Onyx have tried to simplify this, it's still not that straightforward. It's also critical to remind everyone here is like web is one of Google's core platforms and driving ML, ML innovations on the web is critical for the health of the web ecosystem. So to that end, we would like to introduce LightRT.js today. This is Google's new runtime for web. LightRT.js, JS standing for JavaScript, has many great features. Some of it certainly involves being able to run models on several of the popular browsers. We've also expanded support for WebGPU. WebGPU essentially is going to enable improved, improved performance on GPU accelerators on the browsers. And finally, what's going to be even more interesting is that this is a shared model format with Android. So what you could think about it is this is an effort to offer a cross-platform solution. The models that now run on mobile with our TF Lite format will also be something that you could scale over for web. Now, it's critical to remember that LightRT.js is built on top of LightRT. LightRT is our runtime that provides tools for model conversion, optimization, enabling efficient deployment on edge devices. We've certainly scaled to offer model coverage from TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, and JAX. And in terms of efficient deployment, we are also expanding coverage to GPU and PU support, and a lot of this and more to come. So here's what we were going to focus a lot of the talk today, is the challenge that we have talked about and how we can really use LightRTJS to simplify this for running ML on the web. I'm going to hand it off to Matthew to tell you more of how this works. Thanks, Chintan. So to start off, let's go over a bit of the architecture of LightRTJS. So starting from just your normal web application written in maybe JavaScript or TypeScript or really any language that can call into JavaScript, uh, we've got LightRTJS as essentially just an NPM package that you would import as any normal JavaScript library. Uh, this still written in JavaScript will call into the LightRT library, which itself is written in C++, but we've compiled it with WebAssembly to run in the web. Uh, LightRT itself has a few different accelerators. We've got CPU acceleration with multi-threading via X and NPAC, Google's high-performance LinPack library. Uh, we've also got WebGPU acceleration via MLDrift, um, and these both call into the standard like browser uh, backends that you'd expect. We're also working on adding a new NPU accelerator in the future. Um, so to talk a little bit more about the GPU accelerator, this is actually the same web GPU accelerator that um, uh, MediaPipe uses. Uh, you've definitely seen this earlier today in Jason's uh, presentation. But um, yeah, this really lets us get uh, high performance real time pipelines uh, running uh, in LightRTJS. So, um, I promised PyTorch conversion. Uh, let's talk a bit about how that works. Um, so it's a multi-step process, but really this first step is the most important. And this is where we just sort of convert the first, uh, we actually really convert the model here. Uh, we'll use Google's AI Edge Torch package, which is part of uh, our suite of tools for uh, converting from PyTorch and working with LightRT. Um, so to do this, We'll start with the depth anything v2 model that Hugging Face actually has on uh, Hugging Face. Uh, you can download this uh, just using their uh, great API for pulling models from their uh, platform. We're going to wrap this in a, a small wrapper just to sort of control what the inputs and outputs look like. Here we're assigning the uh, pixel values as the inputs, and then we're going to only pull the predicted depth output of the model uh, since we don't really care about any of the other outputs. 
Uh, after we have this small wrapper, we can pass this to the AI Edge Torch converter. If you've ever converted Onyx models, this should look pretty similar. We've got a uh, sort of random input sample that we then pass to the model as we're tracing it. Uh, and then we can save it as a TF Lite file. Um, now, this TF Lite file, which you can visualize in Model Explorer if you want, uh, is kind of big. It's like almost 100 megabytes. This is maybe more than you'd want to serve a, a user on a web page. Uh, but we can make that smaller using the next tool in this process, the AI Edge Quantizer. Uh, quantization is a form of model compression where you can take a large model and make it a lot smaller to uh, make it uh, a lot easier to load on small platforms like web or uh, more constrained platforms like web. Um, and this also helps with memory usage. Uh, so to do that, we will first import AI Edge Quantizer, use it to load the depth anything model that we previously saved as a TF Lite file. We can choose a quantization recipe. In this case, we'll use the uh, dynamic weights at int eight and then activations at float 32 recipe. Um, although the AI Edge Quantizer comes with a lot of different recipes you can choose from and you can make your own if you want one that really perfectly fits your model. Uh, after that, we'll just export the model to a new TF Lite file and we see it's a lot smaller now at only about 27 megabytes, much more reasonable to serve on web. Um, so with that done, we can now test the model. Uh, for this, we'll use the um, LightRTJS model tester. Uh, and if you run this NPX command, you can actually run this locally on your computer right now. Uh, this we will use by uh, uploading that model to the local web page that it runs on. Uh, and we can see that um, we're running on CPU at about 550 uh, milliseconds, but GPU actually failed. Uh, so this is a very good uh, way to make sure that what you've uh, converted actually works. Uh, but for our purposes, uh, at least for this demo, the CPU performance is good enough. Um, so once we verified that the model works well enough for our purposes, we can uh, take the final step of actually running it with LightRTJS on the web. Uh, this package here, LightRTJS Core, is the main entry point to running models in LightRTJS. Uh, and if we grab that model we had previously converted and quantized right there, uh, we can load it with LightRTJS, specify WASM as the accelerator in this case, since WebGPU happened to fail, uh, and then create an input tensor for it. This you would scrape from like a webcam input or something, um, and then uh, run the model. Uh, we get our depth tensor output as we sort of arranged in the, uh, the model setup when we converted it. This sort of matches the, uh, the Python uh, wrapper class that we created earlier. Uh, and we can see now um, with this demo, if we upload an image, click run, we get a pretty good depth estimation from this local model. Um, and it predicts in about half a second. So um, what if you don't have a model in PyTorch that you wanna run? Well, there's a lot of models already converted to LightRT given that it started as an Android uh, runtime. So you can find a bunch of models on Kaggle and Hugging Face if you search for the uh, LightRT runtime uh, in the model filter. Uh, and I've tested a fair number of these, uh, but you can definitely feel free to try uh, your own models out on it as well. Um, and these are all just run in the same model tester I was showing before. Uh, let's focus on this real Essergan model. Uh, this is an up image upscaling model that takes uh, 128 by 128 patches and upscales them to 512 by 512. Uh, and we can actually just take this model from Hugging Face, write a demo around it. Uh, that's a little bit more complicated than just that sentence. But um, yeah, we can see uh, we're getting pretty good performance on CPU uh, with multi-threaded and uh, much better performance on WebGPU. So of course, when WebGPU works, it's definitely the choice for these larger models. Um, now I said this wasn't quite as simple as just writing the demo. Uh, it is a little bit more complicated in this case. We have to like cut the image up, uh, upscale each individual piece and put it back together. Uh, but if you actually already have a pipeline that you like, that you've written in TensorFlow.js, you can reuse that pipeline with LightRTJS. So for this example, we've got the media pipe hand pose estimation pipeline uh, written in TensorFlow.js. Uh, and here's sort of a simple overview of how that would work. Uh, but you can see we're loading the TF model 
or the TensorFlow.js model here uh, from like my model. And then we're also running like model.execute. This is sort of how you would normally run it in TensorFlow.js. If we use the light RTJS uh, TFJS interop package, we can swap that model load and that model inference out with these two lines. Uh, and we'll also have to swap the model to the TF light version. Uh, but by just swapping those two pieces, we can call this model with TFJS input tensors and we can get the TFJS output tensors that you'd expect, even though we're running the model in light RT. Uh, and this lets us reuse that sort of more complicated logic you might already have written in your TFJS pipelines. Um, and yeah, we can see that here. Uh, here it is running in TFJS, and we can swap to light RTJS. Uh, it takes a second to load, and um, yep, still running, same pipeline. All we had to do is swap that model out and swap a few lines of code. So uh, at this point, I will hand it back to Chintan to talk about what's coming next. Thank you, Matthew. That was exciting, and we are certainly thrilled to see what you would do with this. So let's also kind of talk about what, what we're working on for LightRTJS and what's coming next. Uh, we really wanted to emphasize that LightRTJS is certainly a, certain, a big area of focus. We are certainly committed to future innovations and also ensuring we are able to add more capabilities that can offer more useful uh, experiences and use cases to the end users. So with that, we are certainly taking first steps to expand web GPU model support, and that's going to happen in the months to come. That's going to also follow with enabling support for WebNN. So that's essentially going to help us even unlock doors for many other applications with this, uh, with this WebNN support. Another aspect is that if now that we've seen uh, the awesome demos that Matthew has just shown, if, if you're looking to try it out, it might just take you five minutes. You're free to uh, download a model from the Hugging Page face. There's also a web model tester to help you test out the model and decide you know, what might be the best way or the best compute platform to run this model. And with that, I just want to thank you all for your uh, attention, for your time. We also have a QR code up here. So you're welcome to scan here. And uh, this has links to documentation, uh, ability to connect with us, and also sharing feedback. And we also welcome input for any of your future use cases. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.